Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram and we have a special hangout today. We have a new guest, Sri K Suresh, author of the book The History of Vedas. First of all, Suresh ji, namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel for the first time. Namaskaram sir. So, um viewers, you may have seen many of his videos on YouTube. He has been an expert on various topics involving the Vedas and Sanatana Dharma. and um uh, this it's a, it's a privilege for p gurus to be able to bring this book release live to you from uh, various channels of ours we are live right now on twitter on facebook and on youtube as well as uh, sri suresh's own youtube channel so you have a way of following this book release event in many ways and um, First off, I would like to uh, know a little bit more about uh, K. Suresh, the person. Sir, where did your life journey begin, and and how have you come upon to become a writer, especially in in the deep subject like the Vedas? Yeah, thank you very much. Welcome to Ganapati. dot com. This is my channel, and uh, the Ganapati is the YouTube which you would the uh, viewers would have already seen. especially the vedic chant uh, wherein uh, we have been specialized and uh, more so on to ganapata which is uh, rarest of the rare kind of uh, chant of vedas uh, in fact i am the finance professional uh, for the background i think would have seen some of the videos about my background earlier but uh, for the uh, new people in your channel i want to tell you because i had to tell about myself yes uh, uh because otherwise there is no other go <clears throat> i am basically uh, all india rank holder in ca all india rank holder in icwa and uh, all india rank holder in acs and then gold medalist in my masters in commerce after that i did uh, i would say pg diploma in foreign trade management i have been all india first in taxation and mathematics in my career especially the professional careers and um, after that i did uh, uh, diploma in hindu astrology from kadalangudi uh, astrological center uh, madras and i have a stint in inciad uh, at the european uh, management institute of fontainebleau france and i also did uh, the scc reporting and uh, us gap from price of rose belgium in uh, hong kong so this is on my academic uh, uh, side and i have been uh, one of the um, 100 most cfos influential cfos of uh, india by uh, uh, institute of cost and management accounts london uh, this is my um, um, secular qualification or academic qualification side and um, i have been through in the corporate world in the um, high position um, so far and the uh, vedic interest started uh, after i finished all those qualification but i have some kind of uh, thirst of learning always i have been a creator or i would say innovator uh, throughout my life even my professional career i used to do something which is uh, uh, new in the process or system or whatever it is or taxation whatever it is um that uh, so like this here i have a uh, um, thirst of uh, learning so due to rain i may have to go to one place in chennai mailapur that uh, place happens to be a veda patasala so when i heard uh, the vedic chants then i thought okay there is another area of uh, learning so only in the year about 30 uh, i started uh, learning and um, i learned uh, three vedas one is rigveda uh, shukla yajurveda and then krishna yajurveda the highest form of recitation of veda is called ganapata to attain that level in one veda it takes about 20 years this is the status normally people will join at the age of 5 uh, or 7 and then come out at the age of 25 or 27 to learn the vedas and uh, other uh, um, higher degree of vedic recitation and the highest degree of vedic recitation is called ganapata which is of various combination which i will explain maybe during the course of uh, this conversation and uh, to come to that level it is like a phd level uh, it takes about 20 years for one veda and uh, with uh, uh, god grace uh, i have been able to finish in 5 years 
No, it's very uh, impressive, sir. I mean, you've been first in about just about every endeavor you've taken up. And, and this is truly a gift of God. Saraswati has taken residence in your house and in you. And, and I, I really bow my head to you, sir. The uh, I have met a few ghana parties in my life. When growing up, I used to grow up in Hyderabad. Uh, I grew up in a area which was very close to the um, Murugan temple there called Skandagiri. And we were very lucky. I could go to the temple almost every day. And uh, this became a part of my upbringing. I never really thought that much, except that after the gap of many years, now I go back and look back at my life and all these things are starting to come back. For example, I even learned to recite Taitri Upanishad uh, by heart. I used to do that and then it, there was a break and I've restarted now again. But I can see that my tongue doesn't twist as well as it used to before. And I wish I had never given it up because uh, these are all some of those things that, you know, it, it's a, it's something that comes to you by God. At any rate, I, I just kind of me meander. So well, you said that Ghanapati is the highest form of um, learning the Vedas and... And, and, and can you expand a little bit on that? Because beyond learning, say, you said that you've learned three Vedas. Uh, and uh, beyond that, what is the next level that you have to scale to become a Ghanapati? Okay. Uh, as a layman, I wanted to explain uh, yes, yes. Uh, what, what I understood. Because it is for a wider audience who doesn't yes. know about Vedas. Yes. Uh, I will explain in number terms. Then only you will be able to know. Now there is a sentence. Sentence comprises of words. I can say sigma of words is called sentence. In number terms, let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With the joining, this is a sentence. So that sentence is called mantra. So that is one way of reciting the Veda. Another uh, method is to recite the padas, that is words. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. Next form is called Krama method. It is like a step method. You have to join two, two words consecutively, like one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Then you have a type of Vikriti. It's called Ashta Vikriti. The first Vikriti is called Jata. It is like a pinnel in Tamil. Uh, you have to, the combination is, you have to take two words at a time and combination of six. It will be one, Two, two, one, one, two, two, three, three, two, two, three, three, four, four, three, three, four, four, five, five, four, four, five. So in this combination, you have to tell the mantra. The uh, last form, the eighth form is called Ganapata. It is so complicated. We have to take three padas, combination of 13. Suppose you have five words in a sentence. The combination will be 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4. Like this we have to tell. So it is more uh, complicated. It needs a lot of energy. You need a lot of memory power. You have to combine the words and the combination includes the Lakshana, that is grammar for the uh, intonation, that is accent, or, and the Sandhi, which is a change in the letters. So, the popular mantra, uh, which you know is Gayatri Mantra, everybody yes, knows? Yes, yes, So, yes. I can explain, even though I have explained this in uh, number terms, when I go and recite the Gayatri Mantra in this form, then you would know? Absolutely, please go ahead, sir. That's fascinating. Okay. Okay. Uh, Say, this is in uh, uh, Ejuru, Krishna Ajurveda, the mantra will be like this. Om Tatsa Viturvarenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yonaf Prachodayat. This is a sentence. When you cut it into padas, the words, Tat Savituhu Varenyam Bhargaha Devasya Dhimahi Dhyaha, yaha, naha, prachodaya, ate. This is words. Now the krama form, that is, I have to join two to. Tat sabituhu, sabitur vare enyam, vare enyam, bhargaha, bhargo devasya, devasya dhimahi, dhimahi ti dhimahi, dhiyo yaha, yo naha, naf prachodaya, ate. 
Prachodayaditi Prachodayat. This is called Kramaha. When you make it into Jata, you have to take two words, combination of six. Tatsa vitusa vitus tat tatsa vituhu. Sabiturvare and yam vare and yagum sabitusa viturvare and yam. Vare and yam bhargo bhargo vare and yam vare and yam bhargaha. Bhargo devasya devasya bhargo bhargo devasya. Devasya dhi mahi dhi mahi devasya devasya dhi mahi. Dhi mahi ti dhi mahi. Di yo 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 di yo di yo yaha. Yo no no yo yo naha. Naf prachodaya at prachodaya and no naf prachodaya at. Prachodaya aditi prachodaya at. This is jata. Then the gana. Gana is like a missile. That is what you can say. So the same mantra when we go and put it into gana fa, this will be like a missile. Om tat sa vitus sa vitus tat tat sa vitur vare enyam vare enyagum sa vitus tat tat sa vitur vare enyam sa vitur vare enyam vare enyagum sa vitus sa vitur vare enyam bhargo bhargo vare enyagum sa vitus sa vitur vare enyam bhargo ha vare enyam bhargo bhargo vare enyam vare enyam bhargo devasya devasya bhargo vare enyam vare enyam bhargo devasya Bhargo devasya devasya bhargo bhargo devasya dhimahi dhimahi devasya bhargo bhargo devasya dhimahi devasya dhimahi dhimahi devasya devasya dhimahi dhimahi ti dhimahi dhiyo yo yo dhiyo dhiyo yo no no yo dhiyo dhiyo yo na ha yo no no yo yo naf prachodaya at prachodaya an no yo yo naf prachodaya at Naf prachodaya at prachodaya anno naf prachodaya at prachodaya aditi prachodaya at This is called gana mode. So the small mantra which can be recited in this method like this the entire Veda can be recited especially the Samhita portion. So to attain this I would say recite in this mode it will take very long years. This is what Ganapata and this is the highest form of recitation. It's fascinating because I've heard this recited. Um, uh, I used to know a gentleman, I'm forgetting, we used to always call him Ganapatigal. Um, I believe he's still around in a place called Swaraja Press. Swaraja Press has a very famous press that is in Sikandrabad, in uh, in the twin cities of Sikandrabad and Hyderabad. And that is where Kanchi Mahapariva and Kanchi, Kanchi, anybody who is to visit Hyderabad, they used to go from Kalavai or Kanchi, they'll go on the northbound Yatras. And this was one place where usually they'll stay for a mandalam, do puja. And uh, this is one of those places where they had even cows, they could get milk, you know, at the basics. You had to do, and uh, any rate, I I, rem I remember re re listening to Ghanam, and uh, thank you once again for uh, you know sharing that with us. It's truly powerful. I mean, I, I I can see the power emanating from the way you are doing this. Now, I wanted to ask you a more uh, fundamental question, sir. Why do we do these combinations? What is the purpose behind doing that? Because I, I know Om Bhar, you know, I'm sorry, I know straight, straight Gayatri Mantram, I recite it every day. And, and this is something that I've done it as a habit for many, many years. I just do the whole thing. Om Bhur Bhuvasava Tatsavidur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimai Dhiyo Yona Prachodhya. In a no, normal way, not, I'm just doing it here to save time for us. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> See, the uh, Samhita, this mantra is having the letters and the intonation that is very important yes. for Vedas. Yes. Over a period of time, this is in oral tradition. So those people, uh, in the sense, our ancestors, they have done it. They have done it properly. But uh, when time goes, uh, they feel that uh, there could be some kind of, uh, I would say, a correction or omission. All those things may happen either in the uh, pronunciation of letters or accent of the letters, and uh, even the words uh, can interchange or dropping out, erased out. So many things are there. So they have to devise a system wherein it should be um, it should be protected properly without any loss of all those components. So they have done the padapada, that is the words uh, segment, and uh, you repeat the words in the same order of uh, the mantra. Then you make different different combinations, permutation combinations, and uh, for combining the words you make one grammar lakshana. It is called pradasakhyam. And there are a lot of sikshas which is available 
uh, which I have mentioned in my book. Uh, I will, I mean, um, um, but then and there, I will also tell about what I have done. Uh, Oh, no, 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 that is perfect, sir. That's perfect. We are having a discussion here and everything is ties in with the book that you have written. Please go ahead. Okay. And uh, uh, see, I have mentioned about uh, more than 100 uh, Sikshas uh, which were available. Some of the Sikshas may not be available, but uh, I have actually tried to find out uh, those Sikshas which are, uh, which have been written by our ancestors uh, to protect the Vedas. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, uh, when by combining the words in different combinations, the accent is not uh, uh, what you call change. Letters are not changed. The order of the mantra is not changed. So to protect the uh, sanctity of uh, the mantra, all those methods uh, came out because it was in the oral form. After that, even the Samhita, this mantra is also written by our rishis, which we can see in the palm leaves, etc., by our own ancestors. But the Veda, very important thing is the sound. Only that sound make the whole environment changed. So the first pranam is only sound. Again, you may ask maybe later the meaning is important or not all those things. Of course, it may be important, but the first and foremost important is the way of pronunciation. So in our channel, Ganapati channel, we give maximum importance only to Vedic recitation, which is pronunciation and we especially in Ganapata. And even in Samhita Pata, wherever we have recited, you can, we are also giving the script in the screen so that people can learn uh, from it uh, and uh, they can also verify. So it should be Pakka about the pronunciation of the letters. It is not like any other language where you can change the letters and still you can get the meaning because of the arrangement of words, etc. But uh, in Vedas, the pronunciation is very important and our ancestors given lot of importance only for a pronunciation. That is why all the Sikshas and Padishakyas, that is the grammar and how to um, what pronounce, like Matrakal, uh, how much time it has to take to pronounce one syllable. And uh, when you join, then what will happen? What is the changes of these letters? And uh, what will happen for the intonation? Like, you know, uh, when you decide Tat Savituhu, like this I told, but when you chant this Tat Savituhu, and uh, the Gayatri Mantra is available in so many um, uh, forms, that is, even songs, all those things, which is very bad. So, the Vedas, when you go into one particular Veda, we have to recite as per Veda. And uh, Vedas cannot be uh, uh, sung. Especially the uh, what Rig Veda, Rajur Veda, Shukla Veda, like this, it should be as per the method which is mentioned by our rishis. And only the rishis, as given, who saw the mantra, they are called mantra drashta, and uh, gave it to us. So, whether it is for material, materialistic, or to go for moksha, everything is available in the Vedic mantra. That is what I could say. So, the kind of um, derivative methods or the Vikriti Pata uh, is uh, to protect the main mantra and this will also give a lot of benefit. In the sense, people, uh, our ancestors uh, told us, when you now chant the mantra, uh, the uh, Samhita mantra, that is the mantra, then you will get assume one unit of benefit. And the same mantra is uh, say recited in um, Pada form, word form, you will get two times benefit. If it is recited in a Krama form, you will get four times benefit. If you recite the same mantra in um, Jata form, you will get 1000 times benefit. If it is recited in Gana form, you will get infinite time. Anantam, that is what they are saying, you will get infinite time benefit. So, the Gayatri mantra, when you say in the straight form, as you say, which is um, uh, again recited in Gana form, you will get different vibrations because the complexities are more. There is some forward, backward motion, etc. And if it is uh, again about recited in this kind of manner, the whole environment uh, uh, changes. So you go and select some uh, other mantras also, which are for a particular purpose, which uh, we have uh, published in our uh, channel, the Ganapati. Um, wonders, people around the world, uh, they are cherishing like anything. That is what. See this. Uh, this I have uh, I have been doing it during the COVID session, but uh, they say the subscribers uh, went up like anything and. Uh, 
Uh, then only I know that there are a lot of people who like the pure Vedic chant. Uh, maybe people are saying that only one channel which is, which is having a pure Vedic chant is the Ganapati. That's uh, it's very, very good to know, sir. In fact, um, I can tell you from a lay, person, a lay person's perspective, somebody who is reciting Vedas and, and Ganam and all these things over a period of time, there is a tejas that comes on their face. And I see that in your face. I'm, sell, I'm telling you without any hesitation because I remember how uh, my other friend Ganapati used to look when I used to interact with him. I was very young at that time. But I could always remember that there's a certain um, glow that comes out. Tejas is, I don't know, there's no, no Engl in Indian English equivalent for that word. But I see that in you, sir. And, and, and all the best to you for this. But let us get back to the main reason we are having this conversation, which is to talk about your book, A Brief History of the Vedas. Now, uh, you, you started writing this book when and what prompted you to write this book. Uh, and uh, I've been, you know, many hangouts and P gurus, we've talked about trying to put a date on many of the events. For example, Rig Veda, when do, you, when do you think it was developed? Was it one time thing or was it over a period of time and so on and so forth? So perhaps you can lead us through your journey of how you came about writing this book. Okay. See, I have some interest, I have some curiosity about the Vedas when I started learning. From 2003 onwards, I have been writing this book. This is the final uh, version of this book uh, for the readers. This is called Brief History of Vedas. So, I used to interact with a lot of uh, learned Vedic pundits to know about uh, interesting facts about uh, the Vedas. And they also suggested some books. And I used to get some more books, articles, etc. I made my own observations and research. And go on writing it from time to time. <coughs> the final uh, uh, output is this uh, uh, book. Um, so, this book has about 100 uh, Veda Shakas, even though uh, people used to say that we had about 1,180 Veda Shakas of all four Vedas. Uh, but um, I have um, tried to collect about 100 Veda Shakas names and uh, what was this uh, content, etc. and uh, who are the uh, guru of that Veda uh, to propagate that uh, Shaka, that is branch. And uh, there are more than about 100 shikshas uh, which uh, talks about uh, these Vedas that also I have uh, given in this book. And I have also mentioned about 175 Upanishads um, which are even I would say prevalent today. And I have mentioned all those names. Normally people know about 108 Upanishads. And um, there are some unpopular Upanishads of about 67. So it comes to around 175 Upanishads. <coughs> Sorry. These uh, Upanishads are um, for all four Vedas and uh, further divided into uh, the Samanya and Sanyasa, uh, Shatta, Vaishnava, uh, Saiva, and Yoga. So these are the subdivisions also I have uh, classified. And uh, I have also mentioned the rishis uh, who have contributed the mantra initially, I would say during the Rigvedic period, and uh, their families, and uh, how they got arranged later on with uh, my own observations, especially on Rigveda, how it got arranged. About six observations I have given. And uh, the whole chronological development of the Veda is from the mantra, then you have the Brahmanam. Then you have Aranyakam, then Upanishad, after that Sutras, and then Parishishtas. So these are the order in which I have navigated the readers. So that uh, from the origin to the present status. Then uh, the, uh, uh, there is a um, difference between Charana and uh, 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 Shaka. So what are the confusions and what are the subdivision like uh, Sutra Sarana, uh, Sutra Shaka or Brahmana Shaka or Samhita Shaka. These are the branches or uh, subdivisions uh, which uh, people have uh, um, I mean, have to understand. Then the Brahmanam, like uh, you know, Taitriya Brahmanam or Satapada Brahmanam um, or you can say Samaveda Brahmanam. So there are some Vamsas, lineages uh, from our Rishis. 
So from Devatas to the Rishi family, how it got? This is called Vamsa lineage. Uh, especially uh, we have done it for Samaveda and uh, Shukloji Veda even. Another interesting fact is uh, how the world was created and uh, what is the Gayatri Mantra and its meaning and other extracts of Gayatri Mantra from Gopata Brahmanam of Atharva Veda, which is very rare to understand, which is not available easily uh, to people. So that I have explained it in a different uh, style. And the Pradashakya, about six Pradashakya, you can say Vedic grammar are available uh, presently. And I have uh, quoted about 52 authors prior to the existing uh, Pradashakyas. Who are the authors uh, for this Pradashakya? <coughs> so this also I have given. Some interesting facts people always uh, have uh, when they want to know about Vedas is uh, whether anybody who has classified the Veda before Veda Vyasa. That is one of the um, interesting questions you have that I have answered. Who are the person who have classified the Veda before Veda Vyasa? And when you talk about Yagya Malkya, immediately Janaka will come. So they are good friends and Guru Shishya, all those things people will tell. I am telling and when it is Janaka, immediately people relate to Sita's father. This is what people are doing. I am saying Yagnya Valkya has no relationship with Sita's father Janaka. That I have also proved that he has no link at all. So I don't know why some of the um, people are telling about uh, Sita's father and Yagnya Valkya because the period is different like this I have told. Another thing in this, uh, in this book is I have given the flow chart from Veda Vyasa to uh, the four uh, people like Paila, Vaishampayana, Sumantu, Jaimini, like this, how it got. From there, how many down steps it has gone and how the shakas uh, branched out. That the full flow chart and explanation has been uh, uh, given. Of course, the legend uh, Yagimalkya's life history has been full. But in a contents and manner has been how, because uh, he is one of the contemporary Rishi during that period who has found a new Veda itself um, called Shukla Ajurveda, which is different from uh, Ajurveda, Krishna Ajurveda. <coughs> there is also another fact, interesting facts I have given. Even though Puranas uh, talks more about uh, Veda Vyasa, but Veda Vyasa is not quoted anywhere in Vedas. That is also one of the interesting facts. So what are the proofs and what are the facts behind this uh, also I have given. Veda Vyasa is not quoted often uh, in uh, Vedas. So what are the points uh, of this? Then of course uh, there is a um, documentation of uh, Vedas called Anukramani. That also I have, uh, I have actually done it. Uh, and then um, the way uh, as you asked these kind of Vikriti Patas, that Ashta Vikriti and others. I have given the um, um, formula for reciting the um, Ashta Vikritis uh, in this book in a number terms, which is very rare to find in any of the available books in the world because it is not available at all. In uh, writing in number terms about how to chant the Vikriti to normal person like us is very, very difficult. That also I have given which is to protect the uh, Vedas. And I also given uh, how to recite the Veda to get the benefits from Vedas. That is the secret. What is the secret of getting or reciting the Vedas to get the benefit? What are the methods that also I have given? So it is called a uh, secret of getting a desired result from uh, Vedic recitation. Then it also talks about uh, how the Veda Shaka got uh, branched out or the origin of different Veda Shakas. Of course, the extinction of Veda Shakas. What are the reasons for extinctions? So, uh, this is how the book navigates a person. Uh, I mean, who does not know about Vedas, but uh, who is interested in knowing the Vedas. This will be a good uh, uh, handbook for him. But at the same time, uh, about 99% uh, of any doubt a person has, 
he will get answer especially about vedas i have not gone to other areas this is practically a kind of uh, uh, particulars about vedas i am not uh, i am not um, releasing the book on chanting of vedas that is different books i have done about 22 books i have written so far in sanskrit that is for vedic recitation vedic recitation on ganapata ganapata book also <clears throat> we are the only uh, only person who has written the ganapata in script form you can go, go on google it you put ganapata veda whatever it is only my site ganapata.com will come and my books only will come in the internet there is no book available in the world in the ganapata in script form so we have actually published rigveda shukla jirveda and krishna jirveda some um, some ganapata still i am also doing um, and then i have to uh, i have mean, actually release some of the books but as of now from 2002 onwards there is the first book i have published by uh, say um, his holiness sangracharya of kanchi kamakoti but jayendra saraswati swami gal that is uh, sri rudra ganapatam and pancharudra ganapatam i have actually written and he he only released it again 2003 i have released uh, chamakam uh, ganapatam and uh, some of the small ganapata from major veda like that and uh, maybe whenever it is possible uh, apart from my main work my profession uh, in the night i used to work and i have released so far 22 books and shukla jir veda i have published the uh, entire data pata of 40 adhyayas the, uh, and all those things are available ganapata in script form you go and google it you cannot find anywhere you have to come only to ganapati and uh, the vedic recitation also ganapata you have to come only to ganapati um uh, it is absolutely uh, astounding uh, fascinating uh, information um i uh, please please go ahead and take a drink sip of water it's uh, i am letting you talk and uh, uh, it, it takes a fair amount of toll we don't realize it uh, the throat runs dry <clears throat> um i have a few questions these are all neophyte because i have you know scattered pieces of knowledge and please uh, treated that way like a learner who's uh, more of a hobby yeah, yeah. so i have you know heard chamakam uh, you know i'll just give you one phrase that always used to fascinate me ekachame triyachame panchachame saptachame navachame so th- this thing goes on what was the reason behind this chant because somebody explained to me like this and i you know again this is my ignorance if i'm putting it wrong that person explained like 1 plus 3 is 4 and square root of 4 is 2 so the second term is 2 and 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9 and the square root of 9 is 3 the third term and so on and so forth there is it's just a odd numbers being recited and then the mula there is that the first one is square root of 1 second is uh, you get by doing a square root 2 3 4 4 and four. maybe you can dwell upon it a little bit more because it's a fascinating thing everything you touch about this see one of the problems that people who have moved away from india face today is that when they grew up there were temples around them there were festivals around them there were chants around them they went to weddings they went to they had things and these things you absorbed in your ear but once you step away from india right all this goes away that's why suddenly it's like you're rediscovering your youth and that's why you're seeing so much resonance for your uh, effort in in across the world because we, many of us are thirsting for that information so if you could please uh, help me understand uh, this this sequence in, in chamakam sir very good question you have asked there are so many people who wants to know about this anuvakam which is 11th anuvakam uh, 11th anuvakam of uh, chamakam <clears throat> recently i have also published one uh, um, youtube called chamakam decoded where i have explained about my experience with uh, sankracharya of uh, of sharda math swami gal that i will elaborate to you to explain your question so uh, it was about 2 3 days holidays i had so i want to go to annapurnesh temple then shringeri then dharmasthala like this i have planned since i was in bangalore this happened in 2005 so i went to shringeri and i was in a queue and want to meet swami gal my turn came then i went and i gave my book to swami gal he went through it browsed through it then he asked the same question because the chamakam book 
Ganapata book was released in 2003 by Kanchi Piriba, Jayendra Swamy. And after some time, I want to I want to meet him and I want to give him my books, which is which is written by me. So Chamakam book I gave it to Swamy Gil. Then uh, he was browsing and eleventh of November came. We put lot of numbers. What is this? I said, yeah, so Swamy Gil, this uh, this is only numbers. Then I have explained. Okay, can you please explain to me? I said yes. So I wrote one, two, three, four, five like this up to seventeen. Then I squared it. Like one square one. So from zero to seventeen I put zero square zero, one square one, two square four, three square nine, uh, four square sixteen like this I wrote in another column. Then I have detected the first number from the second number, like one square minus zero square, that is one minus zero one. Eka chame. Two square minus one square, that is four minus one, three. Trish chame. Then three square nine minus um, four. Four. Pancha chame. Like this, it will go on. Sixteen minus nine seven. So Sapta chame. One, two, three, four. I mean one, three, five, seven, like this it goes. <clears throat> it will end. Like Trayastrigum Sachame, it will go on the end up to 33. So he was seeing me and uh, smiling at me because the next series is not 35 or 37 like this. It goes to 4, 8 like that. Like Chatasrachame, Ashtauchame, Badasachame, like this it will go. He smiled at me and then said, What are you going to do? I said, You go and add. We have already already uh, made derived from these squares, like one square minus zero square one, two square minus one square uh, three, three square minus two square <coughs> five, four square minus three square seven. These are the numbers. So when you add one plus three four, chatas raschame three plus five eight ashtauchame. Then Dwadas five plus seven, twelve, Dwadas Chame, this will go up to forty-eight. He said, Sabash. Then I said, This is not only thing, <clears throat> there is a mathematical rule. The sum of two odd numbers is always even number. Yes, yes, yes. A sum of two even numbers always even number. Even number, correct. So, initially, God, normally there is a saying that odd numbers represent devatas, even number represent manushyas. So, initially, devatas joined together, that is, odd numbers joined together, and then created manushyas, even number. Later on, even number joined together and then created manushyas. Manushyas joined together, created manushyas. He said, Superb. Your concept is there is another angle which you have given. Otherwise, this um, meaning or derivation of the numbers for Chamaka were not explained earlier. That is what they said. There is also another method <coughs> which, I, which I found later, which I will explain to you later. But this is the general uh, the method of uh, Chamakam, how this Yekachame, Tisrasame, Panchachame, Sattachame came into force. This I have written in. Um, the Chamakam Gana book, which was published by me as an introductory note, which is my research. And um, uh, people used to appreciate that uh, even now. So this is appearing in my Chamaka Ganapata book. So this is the concept of uh, that numbers. So I'm, I'm taking a slightly different philosophical route here. And I will explain to you my understanding of how um, you know, knowledge was dissimilate, uh, disseminated throughout Bharat Varsha. When I say Bharat Varsha, I am going as far uh, west as perhaps even Persia and as far east as I don't know where it ended, maybe somewhere in Java or something like that. But up until 1822, India had a system of Gurukuls. I am reciting from a book I read uh, by Dharampal called A Beautiful Tree. And in that, the the thing that people learnt in all these gurukuls was essentially you know the the vedas then the the two itihasas uh, ramayana and mahabharata 
and and then you know many other things whether uh, Upanishads and and things like that now even when I was growing up if I went to uh, Shankaramatam even in Hyderabad there used to be small kids five year old six year old seven year olds they'll sit down there and they will be chanting it they'll be chanting something it will be it will be either uh, as simple as uh, you know Jai Jai Shankara Har Har Shankara or something a little bit more complex like for example I learned uh, uh, Saptamodhyaya of uh, Bhagavad Gita because it was told to me that it's a Jnana Vigyana Yoga if you become a you know this is when I was like eight nine years old that if you want to become an engineer or a doctor you want to recite this thing so I did that I mean this is at that age you are just told to do something you do it my fear is today all those things are seeming much further in the rear view mirror Whatever be the reason, you know, maybe people are finding it difficult to go from place A to place B. People don't go to temples any every day anymore. But Macaulay made sure that we suddenly became illiterate. But this custom, this habit, this has continued over the time. What I would like from you, sir, humbly is, how do we revive this thing today? <clears throat> See, the language can grow only when you speak. So Vedas can grow only when you talk Veda, not talk about Veda. That means you have to recite Veda. Nowadays, people around the world, they are interested in learning Vedas. I'm telling you, the kind of um, response I'm getting. Earlier, I was not so much attached to the uh, people. But nowadays, uh, because of the YouTube channel, uh, I am may, maybe more or less closely linked with people. I am able to understand the views of, um, views of my viewers. They are very much interested. And the next generation from us, they are interested. Now, it is our responsibility to give the correct pronunciation of Vedas. That is very, very important. The purpose of my channel is to provide the correct pronunciation as per Veda where how our ancestors used to do. Yeah, we were talking about 1800, 1900, maybe 200 years for maximum. So about three to four generation or even five generation. Our own uh, forefathers, they lost. Even some of the Vedic recitation is not, also not proper, which I know. But I don't want to propagate those signs. I am saying, what is the better side of the propagation of Vedas? There are a lot of people who want to encourage Veda, but they are not able to find the correct person. So, with this, um, I am I'm saying, I mean, with this interview or conversation, I am saying, requesting, there are people who are uh, the good chanters of Vedas, which is very important. And the present generation wants to give the Veda in a proper form as recited by our ancestors to the next generation. Next generation are interested in Vedas. There is no doubt about it. Everybody wants to learn. The problem is how and where to learn is a question now. Especially the same five years, seven year old who are going to a normal school, I'm saying. I mean, what is called a secular kind of studies. They are also interested in Vedas, maybe not as a main course, but during the evening like this. The duration for learning the Vedas may be more for them because they have to parallelly do this. <coughs> Whereas, at least over a period of time, people, especially the, our children, grandchildren will be able to recite the Vedas. More so, the office goers like us, I have, I have as come across a lot of people who wants to learn Vedas. Maybe during holidays, uh, or Saturday, Sunday like that, or any uh, holidays, or in the evening like this. There are a lot of people. So you challenge them into proper way. Instead of saying, no, it is last, it is last. I'm saying, no, it is not last. They have a <clears throat> thirst, which is not quenched by some of the people. That is, what, uh, that is where I am coming. Because I am also like them. I know what is the problem. Because we have to go for yearning in the, uh, in the daytime. And when we come in the evening, we have the responsibility of learning the Vedas. But I don't have any guru or any tool to uh, learn the Vedas. So these are the issues. So I have addressed only those things. 
I am saying, okay, I will give you audio, I will give you script. In, in fact, I have also published uh, most of the mantras in English. Those who does not know Sanskrit, I am not, I am not leaving them. No, no, you learn because you want to learn, you know, better you learn. I am now giving you in uh, what a phonetic English so that the same Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit uh, um, what pronunciation can be done there also. So I am not leaving them. So I am giving them enough material for them to learn. Definitely they will be able to pass on to, uh, pass on to next generation. This is the encouragement I am uh, I'm having now all over the world. And uh, more so in, of course, in India and uh, US and uh, I would say European countries, even some of the Eastern countries like Australia, Singapore, etc. Um, people are there to learn. They want correct pronunciation and uh, the current uh, um, intonation of this for us. Even though they don't know, see, one of the peculiarities you can see, uh, which, which uh, in fact, I don't know the answer. I don't know the subject. But I am able to appreciate the subject is only Veda. When you see some of the uh, in uh, some occasion festival, we will call, we'll call the Prohits. Prohit will come and do it. We will say this Prohit is not at all uh, doing properly. Then uh, in some other occasion, another Prohit will come. We are saying uh, this Prohit is doing fantastic. So I asked that person, do you know Veda? He said, I don't know. So he does not know Veda, but he is able to appreciate or not appreciate another person who knows Veda. So the thing is, let us first know the Vedas. It will give confidence. As you said, it will give Tejas. Definitely some change will happen in one's life. The sound, I am talking about the sound. The sound makes everything. Even when you see the Maharishi um, um, and other, uh, other learned people, including Aravindo or who it is. Everybody talks about even the whole body is made up of sound. And for any other observation also, you are talking about ultrasound. So everything is made up of sound. The sound can differentiate or can change your life. And Agni is one of the very important devata who can transform one's, uh, one person. That is why Rigveda starts with Agni, Agni Mele. So, when you talk about Veda, we can go on talking so much on the grammar, uh, all those things. That is why I found out another thing also I will tell you before you ask the question. <laughs> uh, because these are the things I have to tell because nobody knows. Even in, in my family, I used to tell what I have written so far, the Ganapata, which is not at release, no one knows. I have done so many work over a period of time, whenever I find time, it is not at released. It is in the hard disk, even because there are so many versions also I have done. So only when I come and tell I have done this, people know about it, even, even in my family. That is the status. Then you can imagine about others. I also found out a method called Suresh Paddhati. Um, uh, recently I have uh, released uh, one uh, YouTube audio. Uh, video about Suresh Paddhin. That is the new method of reciting uh, the Vedas. We know that Ganapada is the highest form of recitation which I told you. Suppose when you chant the mantra, uh, the Ganapada of two Vedas separately, immediately, how it will be? It will be a mind-boggling exercise. So, with that, you will be able to identify or to show the difference in pronunciation or the appearance of the words itself in the two Vedas or three Vedas and the Lakshana of Sandhi between two Vedas of the same Padas, everything get highlighted. So I have also chanted uh, maybe two mantras there in that uh, uh, video called Suresha Paddhadi uh, during Diwali about uh, uh, yesterday I have, I have released it, which uh, talks about <coughs> the Suresha Paddhadi so that the normal person Normally, we are interested when two persons uh, quarrel each other or fight each other. Here, what happens? Rigveda person will tell Rigveda the same mantra he has to repeat in Ajurveda. So, you know the difference between uh, these two Vedas in pronouncing in their own school, as per their own school, the uh, Veda Shaka. So, that I found and uh, it has been appreciated by um, Kanchi Sangracharya, then uh, even Shringiri Periva. And then uh, uh, Pejavar Mat Swamigal, and then Sirsi Swamigal. Uh, 
and see see ravi shankar ji and then shiv kumar as one middle of uh, siddha ganga mat and i would say murli dev swami like this and uh, there are lot of other vedic scholars uh, who appreciated this because this will create inter- uh, interest in the way in learning vedas my whole objective is somewhere or other i will give some coat of sugar and here i will coat something else maybe butter all those things but finally i want to give the medicine to you that is my objective so i wanted to create interest in vedas in the normal person uh, so that is by providing the tools for him or weapons for him to go and fight so that is books and audios i am giving another thing by uh, way of suresh paddhati this will also create in learning vedas and he can also identify what are the uh, differences between two vedas even the mantra is same so all those things i wanted to give it to the person so that he is having uh, enough information uh, to learn that is my objective uh, i have a small uh, favor to ask you sir yeah let us accept today's life is completely regimented as soon as the child starts entering third grade or fourth grade the parents already set out the calendar for them what they need to do what time they have to get up what they need to do this 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 the whole place the whole calendar is set up some may meet it some may not meet it but at least everybody has an idea of how they should be bringing their child up now let us say that we can tell people you have 15 minutes in the morning for your child to spend time on this subject about vedas now uh, i i still I, i'm ignorant that i have not looked at some of your videos sir to tell whether you've already answered this question or not but it would help our viewers greatly if we can say in the 15 minutes you have every day for your child this is how you can do it it could be like something today next day something else something else if there is something like that you have planned on perhaps you can share your thoughts on that and before you answer sir i just want to tell one thing uh, i have the follow up question is where is the book available for uh, purchase go ahead okay i will first answer the second question then yes. i will go to first question sure sure uh, the all the books and cds are available in ganapati.com i have a website where you can order the uh, books and uh, cds online and it, and it will get uh, and it will get shipped immediately um, almost all the books which are available and you cannot find these kind of rare books anywhere Uh, by any author that also i wanted to tell you because, because these are all ganapatas where a person wants to see in our uh, day to day life we want script to um, uh, script to read ganapata is not written anywhere it is only in oral tradition so i am the only author in the world to write that oral tradition into script form so you can just read it it will be, then you will become ganapati so this is very 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 simple in the same order with the swaras and all those things i have already written it okay that is the first question this is available in ganapati.com g h e a n a p a t i.com this is the uh, not ganapati ganapati the person who chant gana is called ganapati that is the title given right and uh, when you have 15 minutes or half an hour in the morning or evening what you will do you want to dedicate to vedam you take one chant if he is a child there is no need for script he can hear it i am telling you whether it is a child or an adult within 10 days he will be able to recite along with me along with my voice i am telling you you or me whoever it is because the clarity and the speed in which it has been recited first day you may not know second day you may hum with that third day fourth day or fifth day all the words you will be able to know because the clarity is so that you will be able to utter along with it so by 10th day you will be able to chant along with the audio or video to that extent i am sure no, not because i have chanted it this is the experience many people many scholars scholars means not vedic scholar alone i am talking about great lawyer or chartered accountant or who who were it is it is their feedback another thing also i will tell you any person who bought me cds or book he has to call me somehow or other even though i am i am not providing my number to anyone somehow or other he will call me or uh, or through uh, contact me through mail because it will not allow him to rest it will induce him to call me that is my success because the kind of pronunciation etc 
that will induce him to say thanks to me which i actually come across to this which you can also see the comments in my channel um, because the pure vedic chant is not at all available in any channel in the world when i see i have no person in the front i have no person in the back it is not available and it should be in a particular uh, shruti pitch that is very important for vedic pronunciation and see when i am doing it it is a four or five dimension one is i will ensure that the pitch is in x axis and the alignment of the words not even words even the letters are in y axis of the two or three person who are chanting it and the intonation or accent or swara of the letter is in z axis and the speed in which it has been recited is in the next axis like this i have made so that it is pakka in all directions so that it will give the benefit my objective is there are so many people who are like a radio radio i am broadcast okay the uh, ganapati is only broadcast what kind of benefit you are going to get i don't know each and every person is tuned to some vibrations so if he attached himself to the vedic chant of mine those people will get whatever the benefit is due to him so i am only an opener of some of the issues which got struck in fact i want to protest because where the mantras are real because it is given by our own rishis and they have also devised a method how it should be chanted i am following that or i am trying to follow that that is what in a polite way i can say and i am giving in the in that form so it has to do its own purpose that will be done for those people who are listening or who are chanting in that way and what is the quantity or the uh, kind of uh, 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 levels that depends on the radio and this value so he has to tune himself to that to receive the uh, signal that is what i could say but definitely vedic chant is has uh, its own uh, vibrations uh, which has to be there for uh, for in all homes that is what uh, our own ancestors told as even when you see about two generation back your father or grandfather they are for it i am talking about all the people some more or other we need the sound of veda in our house that is why those times you have to invite the people vedic pandits to come and uh, chant it now i am uh, that is my vedic pandits including me are coming to your house daily uh, for the vedic sound that is what i could say but definitely it will change your environment to, to that extent i am sure um this is uh, i'm speechless right now because uh, there is so much that i have absorbed and i hope our viewers did too so there's only one question for uh, this uh, session for ours and i'll ask you that question um and before we bring this uh, hang out to a close bala subramanian sundaram wants to know what is the difference between krishna yajurveda and shukla yajurveda okay <clears throat> this i have uh, i have written in this book there is what all the questions will get answered in the brief history of vedas yagyavalkya was the disciple was uh, disciple of vaishampayana vaishampayana is in charge of ajurveda there is no krishna shukla at that time because he is the in charge of ajurveda appointed by vyasa veda vyasa so there was some conflict uh, during the Uh, learning process uh, all those things i have actually explained in the book you can you can go and read it i don't want to elaborate those things so vaishampayana the guru asked yagyavalya the shishya to return back what he has learned so he vomited it with blood and other things uh, as a symbolic one and he went away those items has been eaten by the birds called the titri and that become the taitiriya shaka later on that shaka is called krishna ajurveda then yagyavalya went, went to his own town 
and uh, pray to sun god and uh, with the blessing of sun god he got a new veda which is not um, being heard by any person called shukla jirveda he named it as shukla jirveda it is also called vajya vajasni saga uh, krishna is you can say black or mixed in krishna jirveda then so after yagnavalkya episode then it become krishna jirveda and shukla jirveda earlier it was only yajurveda krishna jirveda it is mix or black you can say the brahmanam portion there is application you can say and the mantra portion was mixed in mantra itself even in brahmanam portion you have some mantras in shukla jirveda you have the mantra separately and brahmanam separately the brahmanam separately is called shatapada brahmanam separately which has no mantras and the mantra samhita is called there is uh, there are so many samhitas are there presently you have kanva shaka samhita and then madhyendra shaka samhita madhyendra shaka samhita is popular in north india and the kanva shaka is uh, popular in south india and uh, western india especially gujarat this uh, this uh, these places it is uh, there so and uh, ajur krishna ajur veda also you have a lot of uh, uh, samhita veda shaka uh, called taitri shaka in south and then kataka shaka kata shaka maitreyi shaka like this in north west and east all those things and uh, how it got spread over uh, uh, the period of time in india all those things i have actually written in this book there are three teams uh, who went to uh, east and to north and uh, madhya desha of india during that period and there are names called alambi and all those things are i have also written who was the leader what is the name of the group etc then uh, it got spread uh, all over india so the krishna ajurveda shukla ajurveda difference is uh, the mixture of mantra and brahmanam portion is there in krishna ajurveda which is not there in shukla ajurveda which is pure white and it called shukla ajurveda so and shukla ajurveda we are very sure that it is uh, discovered by yagyavalkya that was a fascinating fascinating conversation i mean i was asking you some dumb questions and you were giving us the profound wisdom sir uh on a, um, i wish you all the best for this book and i hope that people buy this and understand the basic the rich traditional culture that we have within us within us and i think i always encourage children you start them young 5 6 years old start making them to recite this thing because once your tongue starts twisting it also helps in brain development there is a lot of other things unsaid unspoken that benefits that you get by doing this and i cannot emphasize enough and i cannot thank enough my parents because as a as a child you don't want to do these things you have some other bright shiny objects that you want to do and when i was growing up there was not much tv today that tv is like a, a it's just occupied your life you're occupied your your drawing room but that that is you know that is a fact of life so i i really wish and hope that those of you who are watching this spread the word around this is a great effort that uh, sri suresh ji is doing and i hope that you attain the the intent here i can very clearly see we have to distribute what has been handed down to us this is an invaluable asset and i hope that this light spreads and on a on a humorous note uh, those of you who have seen mr vishwanath's uh, movie called swarna kamalam he he actually describes a plight of a ghana party in that and I, i i hope that that is what is the reality today and and this is one of the things that we need to revive all these things in fact a lot of the archakas and many temples because of covid they are not getting paid they are not getting any salaries If there's any way you can help please find a way to uh, donate to them because many of them are suffering i know a few you know organizations who are actually giving them monthly stipends and 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 i hope that viewers find it in their hearts to donate to such causes once again sir all the best with your book endeavor and and, and namaskaram thank you very much namaskaram you please visit ganapati.com and the ganapati youtube channel and of course you can also contribute to our channel for new vedic content in future and to maintain in the uh, vedic tradition and this is one of the best channel which i mean i don't want to say but you will also experience the chanting of mantra in that manner thank you once again to p gurus 
and uh, Mr. Sri Thank you very much. Namaskar.